This is Wave OSC, a brand new synth plugin. If it looks a little bit familiar, it's because it's a new version of this one, Union by SoundSpot. Now, some people say it's just a reskinned version of Union, and it's pretty close, but there are quite a few differences. I'm actually going to do a separate video with a side-by-side -side comparison of what's different between the two. But this one is going to be a walkthrough, just going through this plugin and showing you what's in there. I think I'm one of the few who really, really love the Union plugin, and I've played around with it a lot. I've done a bunch of presets on it, and I look forward to using this one quite a bit in the next little while. And I mentioned presets, that might be your first question, is will the Union presets work in Wave OSC? And the answer is, unfortunately, they don't. I copied a bunch over that I had worked on in the other one, and I had to change the file extension just to see if it would work. So I changed from whatever the old one was to the new one. <laughs> and it looked like they were working when I reloaded the plugin. They were showing up in the preset list, but they were all just doing the same default sound. So no, the old presets won't work, but that just means it's time for a cleanup and start over with this with this new one. So when you look at it, it just looks like what you'd expect to see in a synth plugin. Uh, you've got a couple oscillators here. The interesting and probably the most interesting thing about this one is it actually has a third oscillator, but it works a little bit differently than the others. So if we just choose a different waveform here, we'll do a square for this one and leave this one as a sine wave. We've got... just a normal sound where they're both mixed together. This is the sine wave on the second one. And then when we turn this on, that's our square one. So where the third one comes in is it will actually generate a third waveform based on whatever you've done on the first two and whichever effects you have going on. So if we were to just turn this one off and we go up here to generate the wavetable, it'll just look like a square. And then if we add this one here and we generate again, you can tell it's got a little bit of the square and a little bit of the sign. But this is where it gets fun. If you move the unison up and we'll move this up to, it doesn't really matter what we, eight and 10. And you can tell every time we hit it, we get a different wavetable. And this is based on whatever's going on here. But you can also add some other stuff, like some effects. So if we add the phaser, let's just add everything actually. <laughs> If we generate it here, it'll just make it a little bit fuller. And you can go through the wavetable. Let's turn the first one and the second one off and we can probably hear it a little bit better. And we'll turn this one up to compensate. So you can choose whichever sound you want, but if you want more movement into it, you can go to this button here and tell now it's going through the wavetable and you can adjust how far it goes through if you wanted to go through the whole thing or just one slice at a time and then if we re-add these you'll notice that these here will be static but you still have that movement from that third oscillator and then you can do whatever you want with this third one we can add some unison and just treat it like any other oscillator We can move the oscillator up and just give it a different feel. Even do an octave down, give it a nice deep feel. Now, one thing you might notice on here is this button called D mode, which doesn't really say what it does at all. And what this is, is it'll actually make it lighter on the CPU. I have another instance here and I put some heavy chords on it and threw the unison way up and you can tell up here Look at the current here. So we're looking at 30, maybe 35 to maybe the, the 40s. And what this is supposed to do is reduce it by about 10%. So let's turn D mode on and just look at this for comparison. So you're noticing it's like 30, it's hovering around 30 and then hitting the 40s. So the other one was around 33, 35 or whatever. So that's actually pretty close to 10%. So you might want to use this or not. I don't really notice a huge difference in the sound, whether it's on or off. If your computer can handle it, you probably don't need it to be on. And I've actually found it a little bit tough to get the CPU way up on this. Uh, the unison is, is way up and the chords I'm playing are pretty heavy, but it's there if you need it. So let's go back to the other one. We'll go through a few presets 
and make adjustments on it so we can uh, have an idea of what these other buttons do. So this one I liked here. And if we choose this one, you can tell it's using all three oscillators and it's using a bunch of these effects here. So the difference between these effects up here and these down here are that these will affect oscillator one and two, and these will affect the whole output of the synth. So if we look at what's going on in here, we can go to these edit buttons, and this is where you'll have your ADSR settings, your modulator settings, and the LFO. So you can tell here that this LFO is on quarter notes. You can tell the speed going through, and we can make it faster over here. We don't notice a huge difference with this one. Uh, we might notice more of a difference if we had it on the level. So you can go here and drag it down to this little box underneath that lights up when you get there. And we're gonna go. You can tell a little bit more of a difference. What we're gonna do here is just turn off these other ones because they're all sort of competing for the same sound. So you can tell a tiny difference. We could probably notice more of a difference if we go to a pad, something a little bit longer. And then let's just remove these two oscillators again. So we've only got this one. We go to the edit button here and we'll go to the LFO, which has an interesting shape. We'll actually drop this one to the level again. And this is on one, so there we go. Now we can notice a lot more of a difference. Let's just do that. So you can tell it's being affected by this LFO. The interesting thing about this one is you can copy this pattern here and load up a different preset and then paste it into there. So you'll have that same LFO shape. So that's how you adjust it so your LFO modulates whatever setting you want. If you wanted to affect your resonance, you take this, you drag it down into this little box here, and then you make your adjustments. If you want to get rid of it, you can right click on it or double click on it if you're using a trackpad and you have it set up that way. Okay, we're going to go back to this main screen. We'll turn these back on. And this is your volume adjustment for each oscillator individually. Again, if we want more movement, we can hit this one and it'll just be cycling through. And you can do whatever you need with these effects down here. You can click on it and then you'll have more settings here. So if we want to bring the mix up quite a bit, then we've got the delay on there. You can do whatever adjustments you need to. Now, officially Plugin Boutique mentioned these updates for Wave OSC over Union. They mentioned a new GUI, which you can tell here looks relatively different. They're all new presets, which is sort of a good thing, unless you really love the presets in the old one, because I don't think they remade those to bring them in, but I could be wrong. Let me know if that's not the case. They mentioned a new preset browser, which is interesting because you can favorite in here and on the old one, you couldn't. There's another thing that I had noticed on Union that was sort of annoying. It wasn't a huge deal, but when you went to the factory presets, then you had to go to bank one and then choose your presets. They skipped that extra step. So over here, once you load, you can load them all or just choose whatever category, but you don't have to go to a separate bank before you can get to your factory presets. They mentioned the latest OS compatibility, which for Macs is really useful because Union wasn't updated to be used natively with M1 or M2 chips. And they say one of the features is future updates. Hopefully that means free updates down the road, but I haven't heard anything about that either way. So this does have what you need to make some interesting sounds. It's got the portamento and glide settings. It's got the velocity, which you can adjust to have all of the notes hit hard, no matter how softly you hit the keys. Like this, if it's at zero, no matter how hard I hit it, it's the same sound. Or if we bring it up to a hundred, if I hit it softly, it's like this. And the, the harder I hit, the higher the velocity is. Anyways, you can have a whole lot of fun with this, especially this generate wavetable button uh, can make some interesting sounds. I hope this is useful for you. I hope you have some fun with this plugin. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.